I was there. Me, Thomas, one of his so-called disciples, I watched him die. Having any idea what it's like to watch all your dreams, all your hopes, all your ambitions being crucified on a, on a rough wooden cross and then die right before your eyes. All I dreamed of, all I hoped of was in that man Jesus and I watched him die. I was standing there when the soldiers came and broke the legs of the two criminals executed with Jesus so they'd die more quickly. And coming to Jesus' body and seeing he was already dead, one of the soldiers took a spear and, and, and stabbed it up into his side. And then when he pulled it out again, he had to leap back to avoid a sudden gush of blood and water. And I watched those two hypocrites, Joseph and Nicodemus, religious leaders who hadn't said anything before. Oh, they were so brave now, going to ask Pontius Pilate for his dead body. Why hadn't they said anything when he was alive? But I guess it was a mercy because because now I saw he wasn't who I thought he was, because if he had been, he'd still be alive. As they took his body down from the cross and started to, to wrap it up in a long piece of cloth, I couldn't take any more. All my dreams were going to the grave with that man. And so I ran away. I ran until I couldn't run anymore, and I wept until there were no more tears in my eyes. I couldn't face being with anyone anymore. It hurt too much. And so for the next couple of days, I tried to keep away from everyone, even the other disciples. But, but I thought that as a follower of Jesus, I was a wanted man. And so I decided to go back to where I knew the other disciples would be hiding. When I arrived in the place, it took me ages just to get the courage to, to give the, the secret knock. And as I stood in the darkness, I made a decision. I wasn't going to be fooled again. That man had already shattered my heart. No, Jesus was dead. End of story. When I knocked on the door, it swung open and Peter grabbed my arm and pulled me inside. But already I could tell something was wrong. Why didn't he look sad? And then, and then he gave me a great big hug and said, Isn't God amazing, Thomas? Was he mad? How could Jesus' death make God amazing? And then he looked at my face and more closely at my, my red bloodshot eyes and he said, you haven't heard, have you, Thomas? Heard what, I shouted. Th 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 you're an idiot. I knew that years ago. And then he laughed. He actually laughed. What, I say? What haven't I heard? Thomas, he's alive. Who's alive? What are you talking about? Jesus, he's alive, Thomas. We've all seen him. You're mad, I shout. I saw his cold and lifeless body up on the cross. I watched one of the soldiers stick a spear in his side. I saw them take it down and start to wrap it up in a long piece of cloth. And then with tears streaming down my face, what kind of cruel trick are you trying to play on me? The others are all, all looking at me now with the same, same smile or whatever on their faces. And then they're all talking at once. But it's true, Thomas. We saw him, Thomas. He appeared in this room, Thomas. He showed us his hands and his side, Thomas. Shut up! Shut up, all of you! Don't you understand? Dead bodies don't come back to life. Somehow they seem to believe that, that God had raised Jesus from the dead. He'd appeared to them in that room, said, Peace be with you, and shown them his hands and his side. <laughs> but I wasn't being taken in again. Oh no, that man had already shattered my heart. And so I screamed at them, Listen! Unless I see him standing right here before me, and he shows me his hands and his side... And I can put my finger in the holes left by the nails and my fist in the scar left by the spear. I will not believe it. And then I ran out into the night. One of the most uncomfortable weeks of my life followed that day. Jesus was dead and gone and my so-called friends had been taken over by some kind of mass madness. And I felt really alone. I tried to keep away from them, but after a week I had to go back for some reason or other. And when I arrived, there they were, just as full of it as before. When they let me in the room, they, they bolted the door behind me and then they started with all those lies. Oh, we've seen him, Thomas, he came and saw us, Thomas, but I wasn't having any of it. Until that is, I, I heard his voice. Thomas. And when I turned to look, there he was. Just as I remembered him, he, he, he wasn't a ghost. 
He wasn't, he wasn't a vision or some imagining of my mind. He was real. The same Jesus I'd known and loved these last three years. The other disciples were, were smiling so much I thought their faces would burst open. But he was looking at me, this, this incredible... But before I could get the words out, he spoke again. Thomas, he said. And then, and then he held out his hands so I could see the scars left by the nails. And then taking a step forward, he pointed to the holes in his hand and he said, Thomas, reach out your finger and put it here. <laughs> Shaking, I, I reached out my hand and, and, and touched the place where the nail had gone. And then he, he pulled his cloak to one side so that I could see the scar left by the spear. Thomas, he said, reach out your fist and put it in the scar. <laughs> I didn't move. I didn't have to because I knew it was true. Jesus was alive. Stop doubting, Thomas, he said, and believe. But I didn't doubt. Not now I saw him face to face, the same Jesus I'd known and loved these past three years, and so I did the only thing I could do. Falling to my knees, I worshipped him, saying, my Lord and my God. And then he spoke to me one last time. He said, Thomas, you believe because you see me but there's a greater blessing for those who haven't seen me and yet still believe I'm alive. 